We would like to acknowledge that we are on the unceded ancestral lands of the Kalaitli Tanay. We are honored to be guests and visitors here where we live, work, and play. This is what can happen when adults step out of the way and students make decisions and design their own learning. This is student agency. My name is Harsh Dhaliwal and I'm part of the District Student Advisory Council here at SD57 in Prince George, British Columbia. We've all heard stories of racism, whether it's through social media or through the news, but we lack an awareness of its prevalence in our day-to-day -day life. Through this project, we're able to listen to real-life stories from people in our communities and in our schools. And through this project, we really want to invoke deep listening and impact people through the power of story and through the heart. Like this year in my social justice class, I did not know much about residential schools, but we had this giant course about residential schools and I learned so much more. And there's all these kids need to know what is going on. And I feel like it's so ignore, ignored. Like people just don't talk about it at all. Like they just push it back, like it's not a problem, but it's huge. In a perfect world, things like racism and sexism and homophobia wouldn't exist, but obviously we don't live in a perfect world. That people are waking up to these type of these type of things happening in our school district and they're not okay with it. So going forward, I think we do have hope that things like this will stop. I think we still have a long way to go. I think that it's been a culmination of hundreds of years of events and things like the civil rights movement in the 60s and yet we're still seeing things today. Like it feels like we're going backwards sometimes. We need to continue. We can't let up and we can't stop fighting the fight against racism. Um, I think we can definitely do better at kind of combating, uh, especially stereotypes. I'm not friends with these people. I have seen people call people out for their racism. And on top of that, the Black Lives Matter movement, just seeing how much people care, it was definitely something that really helped me get through everything. It's okay to celebrate being Italian, Canadian, and uh, Chinese, and Irish. Uh, that, that is, that's amazing because it's part of who we are. And, uh, and I think as Indigenous and First Nations are starting to get that, we need to embrace that as well. That this is, it's, it's, it's a huge part of, of learning. The richest part of your life is your culture. And it, I feel like at the time I felt ashamed of my culture and now I feel ashamed that I felt shame. You know, it's okay to look different and um, just be proud of who, who you are. I think making changes so that it's not, uh, it doesn't seem like a change, you know? Like it's almost so that, making changes so that all these different cultures seem normal. I encourage people to really be um, vocal in times of injustice because you know I heard a quote and it was if you choose to be neutral in times of injustice you've chosen the side of the oppressor and I think that is a, a very powerful quote. Um, just because you don't have someone to look up to doesn't mean you're not you're less valid you're, you're, you're valid and you are appreciated just the way you are to think how far we've come. I can turn on the TV and I can see people that look like me, not as a character or as the butt of a joke. And don't make yourself the joke. You don't have to beat them to the punchline. You're not a joke. Unapologetically be yourself. And I'm not talking about um, in, a, in a negative way, you know, causing a ruckus. I'm saying be yourself when we reclaim who we are and we're able to claim who we've become uh, we're able to understand that we have a lot to give back to society you know personally myself i think it's about hearing from other people that are victims on the best way to move forward i i think that the more stories that we hear the better that we're going to be on the end of it i think it's really important for me as a bystander to like stand up for people who might not be able to stand up for themselves or might be who, who might be too afraid to. Everybody, teachers, bystanders, people in high school, all of us equally play a role to 
produce a positive environment. And as soon as you assume, whether you're a person, a student, a teacher, as soon as you assume what that student is going through, you've made a mistake. Keep standing up for knowing what's right. If you have a gut feeling or you overhear something and you think, hmm, that's not right, to say something. You know, maybe you're wrong about it, but at least your voice was out there and you were heard and you know that you were doing the right thing. We don't want to overpower the voices of color because those are the voices we should be listening to. And I think that it is really important that non-people of color are educated about the harmful impacts of racism and how it can be such a setback. And if we want change within our schools, we have to look at things that are barriers to our young people. I kind of said I'm trying to educate myself to move away from that sort of thing, sort of that, like, get away from that bias. Have many voices um, around the table that are different than mine that don't just resonate or echo my voice, but um, resonate different things as well. Youth aren't the future leaders. They are the leaders. Uh, and as a, as a leader, my job is to support your visions, your goals. When we as First Nations people can get that together and be strong together, I think that um, we can move mountains. We can move our kids to a different place in education.